If you're looking to start refined storage and all you really want is a very basic setup where you can just come in, access and craft manually, not auto crafting, and add some drives, store a load of items, and maybe use importing and outporting or exporting of those drives um, efficiently and learn how some basic upgrade works, then this basic network tutorial is for you. So let's get into it. Refined storage is a lot simpler and beginner friendly than applied energistics is. So if you don't like channels or anything like that, or you just want to have a storage system where you could just store stuff and get stuff done without all the complexities of super crazy networking, refined storage will be for you. So the first item you're going to want to make with a refined storage network, because that's how it works, it all works as a combined network, will be the controller. This is the CPU or the brains, if you will, of the operation. So I'm just going to re remake this kind of here. So when you place down a controller, it can be anywhere, um, it will look like this. It looks like it's turned off. You need to power it. So I'm going to use mechanism to power my refined storage controller. I've just put a creative energy cube next to it, and now it's powered. As you can see, I can right click into the controller and see that it is using nothing out of you know, X amount of um, energy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start hooking up some cables. OK, so you literally just connect it like this. Any side, it can connect to all sides of the controller um, for your network. Anything that I now connect to this will be on this specific network, whereas this over here is a separate network. So I'm going to place these cables down. And then the next thing you're going to want to, um, to actually store your stuff is probably a disk drive. Imagine this is like a server rack or a hard drive rack where you could literally just put in drives. Now, one thing that you're going to be using a lot of in refined storage are these processors. This one for the disk drive requires an advanced processor, which requires you to smelt up a raw advanced processor, which is made as seen. There's a few different processors. They're all made as I've just shown you. So I'm going to add the disk drive onto my cable here. I then right click into it and you can see it has slots for eight disks. For example, this 64K storage disk I could put in here. And now you can see on the top left, it has a disk in it. On the left hand here, we can see it's a zero out of 64,000. That is how many items the 64,000 disk can store. If you're used to applied energistics, you may um, wonder, is there a types of item limit? No, there's not. If you don't know what that means, then don't worry. I'm just explaining it for the people who are wondering. So you can basically store in this disk 64,000 items. So the way that you make this is either with a 64K storage cell, sorry, part, and some quartz enriched iron, shown as, you know, iron and quartz, and some other bits. A 64K storage part is made with three 16K storage parts and some advanced processors. A 16K is made from three 4K storage parts. And one 4K storage part is made from three 1K storage part. And then you make that with silicon, which you just get by smelting up never quartz. So you could kind of see how, you know, three 1Ks equal one 4K, three 4Ks equal 16K, three 16Ks equal 64K. Um, and there are add-on mods as well that add even higher tiers should you want them. What you can also do, rather than using a 64K storage disk, if you don't want to use drives, is make a 64K storage block. And what I can do there is just place down the 64K storage block, right click into it, and you can see it says 0 out of 64K. I personally would use a disk drive um, because I can add 8 into here, rather than having, you know, I'd have to have 8 of these all going across. Um, so disk drive, in my opinion, is a lot easier to store things um, efficiently. But how do we access those items? Well, there's a few ways. One simple way is going to be some sort of crafting grid, as you can see here. A crafting grid is made with an advanced processor and a grid. A grid, I will show you the difference in a second. So a crafting grid. So a grid shows you all of the items in here. Let's say I want to put in here 64 dirt, right? I can literally just go into the grid, shift click it in, and now, when we go over to our drive, you can see there are 64 items in the 64K storage cell. That is because these, this grass is now in the network. So imagine the grid is your, your Windows, your Mac OS, and that's how you're accessing it through your monitor with a keyboard, etc. Whereas the disk drive is actually the hard drive. 
you know, you can't just go and access a hard drive or put things in or out of it without actually using an interface like your monitor on your PC, for example. And that is how I would say to imagine um, this setup here. A crafting grid, however, is the same as a grid, but you can actually craft inside of it as well as seen here. So what are all these buttons on the left? We have the size, which um, changes how it kind of looks. Depending on your UI, it may not really work very well with that, depending on your screen. Search box mode, normal. Normal, auto-selected, JEI synchronized. So JEI synchronized means if I type down here in JEI... Oh, does it only work one way? Yes. If I type in the crafting grid, it will also type it in JEI. Um, so if I go at refined, it will then take up all the refined storage items. We have the sorting type, so I can sort by quantity, by name, by ID, by last modified. So that's in here. So if I put it in here, if I search by um, last modified, obviously it's the combiner. If I search by quantity, it's going to be the grass blocks. Sorting direction, descending or ascending. Do I want the lowest quality or the highest qual quantity? Um, display, normable, nor uh, normable, normal or no craftables, only craftables. That's showing you the items you can craft in here. That's going to be with auto crafting, which we can't quite do in this small setup. And then, the, and then redstone signal. We can also scroll. We can say rotate the grid, um, the balance it out, or clear this crafting grid if you wish. Um, and there's a few slots for upgrades in here, which I'll be going through at a different point, depending on if you're watching the ultimate guide or not. So in the disk drive, we also have a few options, redstone mode, items, or fluids, because it can store fluids in here. There is actually um, fluid disks here. So you can import in, for example, you know, water and store 64,000 buckets of, or 60, yeah, 64,000 buckets of water, for example. Um, you can change that to items or fluids in this disk drive. Blacklist or whitelist. That's what this filter is at the top here. So I can say, grass in here um, and now when I go into my grid you can see I can't actually put in my 64k storage block because oh, oh good look oh good good golly because even though there's other items already in the storage disk I've now whitelisted it to only grass so anything in this disk drive I can no longer add anything else that is not a grass block but you'll see I could put grass in there but this one will not go in because it's whitelisted I can also change that to blacklist or blacklist anything at the top here. I can also add a priority. The higher the priority, the higher, well, the priority. Um, meaning if I had another disk drive here that was zero priority with loads of disks, and then this one had a priority of one, when I'm putting anything into the grid here, the, it will always fill up this one first because it has a higher priority. Exact mode is like if you have durability on items and things like that. Um, or, you know, maybe with like bees and, and anything that is like the same item, but has different attributes. Um, that's what exact mode would be when you're filtering and things. And then access type. Do you want to be only able to insert into these disks, only extract out of them, or maybe insert and extract? Maybe you've got them full of cobblestone and you're like, do you know what? I don't want any more cobblestone going into here. And I'm just going to put it to extract only so that we're kind of using up until these disks are empty. But that sounds like a really tedious way to do that with your disks, right? So let's talk about an easier way that you can insert and extract from different disks um, all together. And that is going to be the disk manipulator. So what I've got set up in here is one, some speed upgrades. Very simply made. You can also use stack upgrades. Um, so it can take out stacks at a time much quicker. Using speed upgrades on their own makes it faster but adding a stack upgrade will actually pull it out you know stacks at a time so that paired with speed upgrades would be really good just a little fyi there so the disk manipulator same kind of filters on the left but we have an in and an out so in this 60k for oh my god 64k storage disk i have in here oak logs and grass blocks so in this one i think that's the grass yes so you can see if i could i could take the disk out and the grass stays in there the grass is in the crafting grid. I take out the grass with the storage disk. Now the grass is not in the network. But what I can then do is go into a disk manipulator and I can say, do I want to extract from the network or insert to the network? I can take this 64K storage disk with the grass in and I can press in. And what you'll see is that the stored amount is going down because it is inserting into the network. So I'm inserting from this disk into the network. I've actually whitelisted grass but i don't need to 
Um, and now this disc is empty. And now the grass is in here, and it'll be in one of it'll be in this disc instead. Maybe I want to say extract from the network, and I want to put my whole network into this 64k storage disk. So I put it in in, and all you'll see is nothing is happening because it's on whitelist. So when it's on whitelist, it expects a list, and therefore nothing is happening. If you move it to blacklist, you'll see that all the items are coming out because we're blacklisting nothing. Um, you could say when it's on whitelist, we're whitelisting nothing, but it's just not how the system works. So th that's that, really. Um, just a little annoyance that I feel like would trick a lot of people. Um, and they might think, why is this not working? But yeah, that's why. Um, and if I try and put this in again, it'll just flip to the out slot because it's saying extract from network. Well, the network is now empty, so it's immediately finished its operation. And that is how you can input and output from different disks. Um, using the disk manipulator and there we go guys so that is how you make a really simple refined storage network and of course you can add you know drives and drives and drives onto here you know just cable them up um and there you go you could store as much as you like on this network really really easily However, if you do want to learn more, check out the playlist that will appear on screen in a second, as I have tons of other tutorials for refined storage that take you up to auto crafting and much more advanced um, kind of processes. I hope you did enjoy the video. Click that subscribe button if you did, and of course, leave a thumbs up. If you're looking for other mod guides, I do a hell of a lot on this channel. My actual goal on this channel is to complete every major mod in the entirety of Minecraft for Forge, Fabric, etc. If you look at my channel, I have a tech mod shelf, a magic mod shelf, a utility and standalone mod shelf, so ones that aren't in playlists. I also have now mod pack guides as a shelf. So at the moment, I am live streaming through RLCraft, and you can get that, of course, on my lives. I, sh I live every Wednesday and Saturday, and you can always see when the next scheduled stream is. And I play through the mod pack, and then I will also do separate guides on that mod pack. So if you are looking for specific mod packs, or you just want to come along and ask me some questions or hang out, you can also do that there. Do also just use the search bar uh, if you are looking for a specific mod. And if you'd like to play with me, the mod pack that I do live stream, I do from our Patreon server, which of course you can join down below, which would massively support the channel, but also gets you access to things like that.